I was already having a bad day. And then that happened. Scratched the hell out of the top of my camera. For such a light fall, I feel like it should have fared a lot better than this. It's disappointing. I was already super in the wrong headspace to do this shoot. Should have postponed or canceled. But after scratching the bejesus out of the top of my camera, I was really, really not in the proper headspace. Hence this incredibly boring opening shot that just screams, I have no ideas. I can think of a million ideas now in retrospect, but at that moment I just had nothing. Nothing. And I hate this type of light. Just overcast, bland, boring, generic, evenly lit. I am working my composition a little bit better now, though. Getting a little bit more adventurous. Go me. My demeanor was so unsure non-confident that I could tell I was losing her confidence in my abilities around this point. At a wedding that would be disastrous, but in a shoot like this, it's still incredibly non-ideal. I like that composition quite a bit. Okay, it was meant to be like a fun summer shoot, and now it's something different. And that's fine, I'm starting to get a handle on it. I did extend the grass here. Um, because although I did my best to make the background look as non-distracting as possible, it still looked fairly distracting. I don't usually do a lot of retouching to my images. However, there you go. That's a full-on fake background. Just needed to be done in this case. And because I was already not feeling super confident about the images, I did spend a little extra time polishing them. I extended the grass there. She hasn't been retouched in any of them, but these shots toward the house, I did spend a bit of time cleaning up the background a little bit. These are legit. Nothing retouched here. In fact, the bulk of the retouching is already behind us. I think other than like one or two shots I can think of, everything else is basically straight at a camera. I mean, not color. I did some color tweaking. But, uh... No more uh, extensive retouching or background cleanup, really. I kind of just got better at working with the environment, and my confidence started picking up. Hey, we got some sunlight, finally. But funny enough, I was starting to get in the zone with the other lighting conditions, and I feel like I didn't do a great job utilizing the sunlight. Like, that shot straight up sucks. And I had no excuse. It was entirely my fault. This shot is okay. Not great, but it could have been. And then we lost the light again. But you know, way back when, when I was first learning portrait photography, I was taught that this is the best sort of light for portraits, but I really came to disagree very strongly with that sentiment. Directional light is everything in portrait photography, and without bright highlights plus deep shadows, what are you left with? You're left with some really boring mid-tones. That's what you're left with. But you do have to make the call. Do I expose for the subject and blow out the sky, or do I go for something overall moodier? But I did choose to expose for her and not the sky or the overall scene. So I was really trying to include that tree over on the right, but couldn't. So I just shot it separately and composited them. But that's the last of the fakery, I think. But when you have sunlight or directional light, it doesn't have to be from the sun, uh, you can expose for the subject and the sky at the same time. And um, I find that preferable. I mean, usually. That might give the impression that I'm into flash photography over available light photography, and I'm definitely not not flash mounted directly on camera, at least. Your light source being directly behind the lens just delivers flat lighting all over again. Plus, with flash photography, you're dealing with other negative artifacts, both on the subject and the background. But a strobe mounted over to the side, yeah, that could work great. That could have transformed the entire shoot. It does come with its own challenges and artifacts. 
I think it works best in urban environments, up against a wall, that sort of thing. Certainly at night, it works great. When you're including some nature or sky, the shots can tend to look a little green screened or chroma keyed fake. They can look fake, like the subject and background weren't photographed at the same time. An indie filter can really help blend them though. But I like what we're getting here. Just even the tiniest little bit of soft light coming through a cloud helps. So this works fine for me as a compromise. Just any little amount of light. And I love that shot. It's softly lit and mostly even lighting, but I think it's great. And this one's not quite as good, but it's still all right. Just worked better to face her into the light. But in general, um, I'm loving this spot and these lighting conditions are working for me. It's overcast, but it's, it's overcast plus. We do have a little bit of pop in the sky and it makes all the difference. In fact, the sun is starting to get a bit more intense and I'm getting a little bit optimistic that we can swing around and do some full on sun portraits. But this spot's working so well, I, I, I didn't want to stop until this idea had been fully explored. I'm really liking what I'm getting for the first time. And so, yeah, I'm overshooting a little bit. That's okay. Funny enough, a lot of times I'll overshoot when I'm not liking what I'm getting. Which doesn't make any sense, but that is a bad habit I fall back on sometimes. But I was at least proud of myself that I didn't do that today. I was more reserved in my shooting and more inclined to just slow down or stop and try to figure out what the problem was. In fact, one strategy I used that really helped get me through the early part of the shoot was to include her in the creative process tell her what I was thinking, but also asking her opinion and, and really respecting what she had to say. I think that's so much more useful than pretending every shot is great. Doing the fake confidence thing. Many, many years ago, I would have done the fake confidence thing, and I would have pretended every shot was great for fear of saying something negative. Both because I would have I thought reflected poorly on me as a professional, but also because maybe she would think it was her fault and then feel increasingly inhibited. But I mean, I suppose that can happen, but if you approach it right, it doesn't happen. Here we had full on sun, beautiful, and I am just eating it up doing my best to use it to its full. If only. If only we had had this sort of light right from the very beginning. Everything just feels so alive. It pops, it has dimension. These are the first shots that have anything to do with the whole concept we talked about in the first place, the whole reason behind doing this shoot. It is a real shame that it took this long to get there, but at least we got there. I'm thankful for that. The psychological impact of having good light. I don't know if customers feel it at all, but it's in an instant I've gone from a disastrous shoot where I couldn't make anything work to just loving everything I'm shooting. I mean, yeah, it's just one change, but that one change is everything to me. But then just as it came, it also went. And we lost the light again. We do have a little bit of a pop in the sky there. And I'm thankful for that. Oh yeah, this was supposed to be a shoot of two people. Uh, one of the people ended up being just a little bit late. Which was not a problem. I didn't care really at all. Only in the sense that the best light is now behind us. And... It's only going to be getting darker and darker from here. Time is our enemy. And one issue I was facing is now that we're shooting two, my brain has sort of reset back to the very start of the shoot. Like everything I figured out up until now kind of no longer applies. In retrospect, again, 
similar to when we first started. I can see what I should have done, or many options I could have tried to explore, but in the moment, I just had no ideas. Now I'm thinking, hmm, I need to increase my depth of field, I need to get them on the same plane. I was very concerned with getting them both in focus, and um, I wish I'd shot it more dynamically. Like, I was starting to get more and more dynamic shooting before, whereas I had started extremely flat. And now I'm right back to shooting and thinking in a very flat sort of way. Um, but I didn't know that at the time. I see it looking back on it. But at the time I was just thinking, hmm, this is kind of boring and this is not really working. But I once again included them both in the process. And we had discussions about what might not be working and what we ought to try next. I think it was the right choice, given the information I had. It could have really helped, potentially. Doing the fake confidence thing never helps anything. But I don't think we really had enough time left to figure it all out the way I did before. But it was also good in that it set the proper expectations. These shots are kind of boring. It's not their fault. It's probably my fault, but it's really the light's fault. And uh, to whatever degree it's my fault, it's the psychological impact that the lack of light is having on me. That's no excuse, but that is the reality. And actually, I said it's no excuse. It literally is an excuse. So that was false. But as I mentioned, what I really needed to do was just get a lot more dynamic, not worry so much about getting them both perfectly in focus in every shot. I wish we'd gone down on the ground. I, like, forgot the ground even existed. In the absence of light, what do we have left to add spice to our images? I guess really strong posing. We worked on that. That's a little bit out of my hands. But I do think they did a, a really good job. That's... That's a great shot in terms of strong posing and just overall. I like it. That was a good shot. One of the better ones. But from my end, what could I have done to improve this overall? Well, yes, I was shooting too flat, as I mentioned. Like, every shot is them a few feet that way, I'm a few feet this way. Camera is parallel to the ground. Also, I think composition-wise, I thought I was kind of working it, but I really wasn't. I don't know why I felt so pressured to include an equal amount of them, both in every shot. Like, this is a great little moment, but imagine how much better it would have been if I'd come in closer and just kind of got details of arms intertwined. That would have been way more interesting. But there's this organic journey that every photo shoot goes on, and we... Uh, we were getting there until uh, we basically started over and I just don't think we're getting there the second time around entirely my fault I blame it on the sun though but definitely not their fault they're giving me great stuff I'm just not doing anything interesting with it I don't know I'm basically shooting it like it's a catalog when uh, what I wanted to do was get a little bit closer to art Sometimes I feel harmed by the fact that most of my experience shooting has been for other people, other companies. I mean, like literally doing catalog shoots, for example. I want to do art, but my brain objects. It makes me do the obvious stuff for fear of disappointing someone. I don't know, really. But also when I'm, when I'm really feeling like it's not going well, I tend to fall back on what I know. And no growth is happening when I do that. No art is happening. I'm just repeating what I've done in the past, choosing the safest path. If you can force yourself to avoid falling back on what you know, I think that is a wise course. It's far better to view times like these as an opportunity to push yourself into new territory. As long as you're falling back on what you know, that'll never happen. And not bringing a light, that was either gross negligence or something. I mean, I, I did think, like, hey, I'm experienced, I can make any lighting conditions work, but I couldn't, really. I didn't like what I was seeing, and it caused me to kind of get in my own head, 
talk myself into doing an even worse job, like a feedback loop of negativity. It's just inexcusable that I didn't bring a light with me, knowing my feelings for flat light, as I do. And sure, tons of people actually like shooting portraits in flat light, so that's not your thing. That's not the thing that's going to derail you mentally. But something is your thing. Discover that thing. Take whatever steps necessary to make sure that you're not getting in your own way.